Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's start to set our design objectives. The first thing that we want to do is go to our study drop down and select study settings. In here we have a synthesis resolution slider. We're going to set this a little bit closer to fine. If you're at all familiar with simulation, we can think of this about like a simulation mesh resolution. This allows the element sizes when it's generating our results to be smaller when we set it to a fine setting or larger when we set it closer to a coarse setting. Because our design is rather large in terms of the size of the component, the frame is going to be a big component. We could use a coarse resolution, but because we have smaller mounting bosses, we want to make sure that we go closer to a fine resolution to allow it to get the small detail in those areas. Next, we want to go to our design criteria dropdown and select objectives. We're going to be using minimize mass for our objective, which will target a safety factor of 2.0 by default. This means that it's trying to converge our outcomes to that safety factor while minimizing mass. It goes through its calculations by reducing material in the areas of low stress and increasing it in the areas of high stress until it converges or tries to converge on that safety factor of 2.0. If we use the maximize stiffness option, then we also have a safety factor target, but we also have a mass target that we're looking to hit. This means that it's going to be using these as targets for convergence when we're looking at our explore outcomes. Because we're going to be exploring multiple materials, I like to use the minimize mass option for this specific case. We'll be talking more about manufacturing methods in our next lesson, but for now we want to focus on study materials. We're going to be using aluminum, and you can use a basic aluminum or aluminum 6061. We're also going to be adding a steel material. So we're going to navigate down until we find steel in our list. And we're also going to add a titanium material. Now it's important before you begin any of your designs that you understand the materials you have available to you and utilize those properties when going through your generative designs. We're looking at three common materials, aluminum, steel, and titanium. However, this frame generally wouldn't be made out of titanium, but steel and aluminum are both valid choices for us. Keep in mind also that the material properties of your final manufacturing method are going to be critical. So if you want to explore multiple materials in here, you can add up to 10 materials in the study and have them generate results simultaneously. If you want to create a custom material, you'll need to go to your Manage Physical Materials. And the way that you do this is very similar to the way you do it in a simulation study. You'll have to pick a material. For example, if we go to Metal and Aluminum, you'll notice there's a lock icon here. However, if we right click and we add it to our favorites, we can then go into our favorites into Aluminum, double click on it, and open up the properties. Inside of here, we can manipulate any of the various descriptive information, but we can also change things like appearance and ultimately our physical properties. We have basic physical properties such as thermal, mechanical, and strength values. We also have advanced properties, and the advanced properties will allow us to change things like the material model, whether or not it behaves in a linear or a non-linear type fashion. So keep in mind that if you have a very specific material that you are able to work with and it doesn't match anything that's inside of your materials library, you want to make sure that you add it to your favorites and create those custom properties so that way you're giving generative the best information possible to run your studies. At this point, let's go ahead and save our file so we can move on to the next step.